In today's video, we're going to walk through the updated React Spa template and how you can use it to build your next highly productive web application. The Service Stack React Spa template has been updated based on Microsoft's own React Spa template, but also further enhanced to provide a great developer experience when building ASP.NET React applications. Today, we will walk through the developer workflow of adding new backend features, integrating them into React components, and then incorporating them into easy to manage content pages that are written in Markdown. To get started with the React Spa template, we can use the servicestack.net x tool along with the command x new space react hyphen spa space my app. This will create a new solution in the my app directory with the usual four project found in service stack templates. And those are app host, service interface, service model, and test projects, along with a dedicated client project for your React application. Despite this split between your client and your backend services, we only need to run our server application when working locally, and we automatically get a Vite process running our React application, enabling hot reloads along with Tailwind for automatically detecting and including styles used in your application. Running your server using the HTTPS launch profile, we will see the backend API start up and show us the metadata view of our services that we have available. Shortly after this, an NPM process will automatically run our Vite front end, which is already set up to use those running service stack services. We can see the Vite hot reload feature working by quickly editing the index.tsx file in the myapp client project under the source pages directory. And as soon as we make the edit, our changes are reflected quickly. This makes editing copy and content heavy pages quick and easy. And it does the same for UI features when we're working with React components. If we navigate to the to-do mvc.tsx file, we can edit the to-do text that's templated in this page. And our changes apply to all the rendered items automatically. The same goes for making style changes using Tailwind CSS, changing the title text on the main index page from using text gray 500 to text red 500, and we can see the new style is detected and included with the regenerated Tailwind styles in our app.css. Something else you'll also notice in the Solution Explorer is these TSX files containing components that live side by side with React Markdown files or MDX files. This is because the template is set up to automatically handle rich markdown content, which can be further enhanced using your own custom React components. This makes it easy to embed interactive components right within your blog posts or other markdown driven pages like landing pages. And here we can see this in the blog post about JavaScript, where we have several different interactive components included in the page. This is done by importing those components at the top in the MDX file itself, and then using those components as you normally would from within another component. Let's include a new one as an example. Let's say we wanted to make it easy for our readers to skim blog posts for shell commands that they could copy and use in their own work. We already have a shell command.tsx component that's already used in various pages in the template. But even from within a blog post, we can include and use this component anywhere in our post. First, we add our imports at the top of the markdown content for the component we want to use. Here we're using the at forward slash prefix as a shortcut which is defined in our tsconfig.app.json file, which points to our locally defined components. Then to use the component, it's the same syntax as if we were using it in another React component, but we're using it in Markdown content directly. For this particular shell command component, it presents the inner content as the text in the shell command that we want to stand out in our blog post, making it easy for readers to see and copy as they need. This ability to include and reuse components within content heavy pages like markdown files means you can make blog posts and landing pages more engaging for your users without sacrificing maintainability. These components can interact with your own APIs, meaning you can build entire workflows all controlled and reused within your markdown content as needed. 
This template also has built-in components like data table, which make it easy to present data from your APIs on your content heavy pages. If we look at the booking CRUD example, we can see the use of this data table along with a create and edit form component. These components make it easy to quickly integrate with service stack auto query services. Here we have the data table binding to specific columns and an instance of a set of bookings coming from our API. We have hooks for row selection so that we can populate our edit form and the create component is binding to a new instance of a booking, meaning we have a full CRUD solution in just a few components. To illustrate a more concrete example of the developer workflow with this template, let's extend the to do MVC page to include a new feature for a due date. This will require extending our data model class, a new query in our API and an update to the UI. Starting with the back end, we can open the service interface project and the to do service.cs file. Here we have our to do services using another auto query compatible implementation of auto query data. This enables the use of in memory data sources such as the POCO data source. And since this data source is in memory, we only have to extend the to do class with the due date property and populate it in some of the example to do items for ease of demonstration. Next, we will update the related request DTO for the API query. The query to do's request will automatically support queries to check for items past their due date via built in auto query conventions like due date less than, which takes any property name on the left the less than suffix and the supported data types like dates and numbers on the right. However, if you have a common query you want to optimize for the ease of use for the developer, you can customize query property behavior by using attributes like query data field or query field for SQL use cases. A simple example might be if you want to see all items due by a specific date. You could create a property on the query to do's request DTO called due by that takes a date and returns all the items due on or before that specific date. The query data field attribute could then be used to specify an operation on the field due date with the condition of less than or equal to and the term ensure. Now, since our query to do's request DTO has added a new property for the request, tooling like the Service Stack API Explorer Open API v3 specification and the Swagger UI via the Swashbuckle library and the add service stack reference feature all include this new query option, all with just the addition of that single property. And if you use the service stack plugin for your favorite IDE, you will have the ability to update your generated TypeScript DTOs, which are in the source directory on the client straight from your locally running instance. Alternatively, you can use the command x typescript from the same folder as the dtos.ts file. Instantly, your generated TypeScript types are updated and your autocomplete suggestions now include the new due by property on the query to do DTO as well as the due date property on the to do model itself. Another great feature already built into the template is ASP.NET Core Identity Auth for authentication along with a registration workflow with email confirmation and even user management by admin users using the built-in admin UI for Service Stack. By bringing together the updated Microsoft React Spa template and enhancing it with the capabilities of Service Stack, you get an extremely productive starting point for your next application. With features like ASP.NET Core Identity Auth, User Management, Open API Specification Generation, and GitHub Action powered Docker deployments, and much more already built in, you can pick and choose the features you need to rapidly deliver your next system. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or feedback on our templates or videos, please let us know in the comments. You can also reach out to us via our community discord, GitHub discussions, and commercial license holders get priority support in our customer forums. Regardless, Service Stack is free for individuals or open source projects, so anyone can join our discord or GitHub discussions. And as always, thanks for watching.